Hey No Way Kids, what's up? It's me Angie here, back at it again with another video. And before we get started with the amazing word that God has in store for every single one of you, why don't we play a little game? And for today's game, we're just gonna be playing a competition to see who can land the most amount of candies inside of the bucket. Let's play. Wasn't that fun, you guys? Yeah. Let's give a huge round of applause to Alfonso. He was the winner for this round. But do you know what time it is? It's, it's worship time. time. God made me. He made everything. God loves me. He can do anything. If I run over here, if I run over there, God is everywhere, and He loves me. When I look up, 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 I know He's real. When I look down, 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 I believe what I found. When I look in God's Word and I search for Him, He rewards me, cause He me he can do anything if i run over here if i run over there god is everywhere and he loves me when i look up 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 i know he's real when i look down 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 i believe what i found when i look in god's word and i search for him he rewards me cause he He's real when I look down, down, down I believe what I found When I look in God's word And I search for Him He rewards me Cause He loves me Cause He loves me Cause He loves me Jesus, I will. Jesus, I will. Jesus, I will. 
kids, what's up? It's your girl Angie here, back at it again with another video. And I'm so excited to see the word that God has in store for you guys on this beautiful day. Um, before we get started, why don't we say a quick little prayer, prayer right there where you are. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather on this day to be able to continue to learn about your word. Um, let it be you who speaks through me to every child. Let every child be able to have an open mind and an open heart to be able to accept the word that you have in store for them on this beautiful day. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right. I encourage you guys to grab your Bibles or grab your notebooks to take a couple of notes. Today we have a very, in my opinion, important lesson. Um, it's about the fruit of the Spirit. And um, we know that the fruit of the Spirit is a result of our relationship with Christ, right? And there are so many different aspects or so many different fruits that our spirit can have that are important to our everyday lives. So um, I encourage you guys to grab your notebook or grab um, your Bible so you can follow along with me and we can um, learn what God has in store for us today, right? And so as we know, the fruit of the spirit isn't like actual fruit, right? It's not like an actual strawberry or an actual um, any type of berry that we can actually eat. Um, but the fruit of the spirits are, um, I guess, traits that people can see in us when we're closer to God. And so, um, I want to turn to the Bible verse, Galatians 5, 22 to 26. And it says, by contrast, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness. Um, sorry, I lost my place. Self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who, who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. And so, um, to just go over the different spirits that one can have, it's love, joy, peace, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And like I said, these are all very important um, traits that one... Um, struggles with on a day-to-day -day basis as we were seeing earlier or um i should say on the commercial video valeria was struggling with patience um but we can also struggle with love to love someone who um did us harm to love someone who might have said an unkind word to us to love you know teachers will continue to give us homework because we're like oh you're so annoying but we still have to show love to them right um what's another one self-control that's so important when um, we have to control ourselves to, you know, eating that cookie or to, we have to control ourselves towards, um, listening to our parents. You know, they tell us, oh, don't touch the stove, but we're like, no, we want to touch the stove. We have to have that self-control in order to, um, please God, right? And so these fruits take time to cultivate and grow in our hearts. But when we learn to grow them, we become great witnesses for the way Jesus can change a person's heart. And so having these fruits or um, when we when we ask God to um, guide us and give us these fruits, it doesn't happen overnight, right? One day we can't um, be lacking in um, patience and, and be like, oh, Lord, please help me with patience. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to, it's a, um, it's a, what do you call it? Um, a process, right? God is going to give us um, tests and God is going to help us and guide us through having these fruits in our lives. But we have to, again, that word, important word, comes again, be patient in God's timing and note that he has a timing for us to acquire these different fruits, right? Whatever we're going through during um, that season in our life, God has an amazing plan for it and we have to be prepared for that and know that he has that perfect plan and we have to know that his timing is perfect regardless of when or regardless of our own timing, right? And so we may, we may want to, um, let's see here. We may want to win or get number one at, um, at soccer, I guess. Like if there's a tournament, you're like, oh, I want to get number one. I want to win the whole tournament. But God says, you know what? You need to lose this one to learn an important lesson. And we can't get frustrated with that because we can't be focused on our own timing. We have to be focused on God and the plans that he has for us. And it takes a lot. That's why it's important that we learn that these, these fruits, they take time to acquire. But we have an almighty God that is going to help us and guide us through that. And so the fruit we can eat grow on trees, right? Or they grow in the ground. 
Um, some fruits I make around trees are like oranges, apples on the ground. Um, actually, I can't think of any <laughs> fruits that grow on the ground. We're going to ignore that question. And so <laughs> they grow on the ground and other plants, but fruit only grows when a plant has been carefully watered, given lots of sunlight and good fertilizer. And so a plant or a seed within itself cannot grow, right? A seed, if you just literally put it on the floor, it cannot grow by its own. It needs different elements to help it grow. As we know, it needs that fertilizer, that sun, that water, and all of these elements combined with that seed help it grow. And so it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to grow fruit. But when we see the tiny flower buds or the little tiny, um, they're called buds from the fruit, and we see those, it makes our hard work in, it might be the garden, worth it, right? And so we begin to see that small amount of, that small little uh, flower, that small little bud, we get like excitement. We're like, oh my gosh, you know, like it's almost, it's going to turn into like an orange soon. Like we're so close to that fruit growing and blossoming and being beautiful. And so that excitement, um, excitement immediately begins to grow within us. And so... Paul laid out a challenge to the Galatians and to us. The fruits of the Spirit are not things that come naturally to us, but can only come from God's Holy Spirit. When we give our hearts to Jesus, we can bring, begin to grow these fruits in our heart. And when the fruit grows in our lives, it makes us a witness to others and the changing power of Jesus. And so let me just rephrase this, right? When we... Um, strengthen our connection with God, we begin to, um, God begins to work on us. For example, if according to this verse, it's, um, difficult for us to be kind and we, you know, accept Jesus in our lives and he begins to, um, help us be kind to others. And then, um, people be around us begin to note that, you know, our friends may tell us, Hey, like, you're acting weird, you know, you're, I notice you're being a little more kind to others, or I notice you're doing these um, acts of kindness out of nowhere, that's God doing his will in us. That's God being shown through us. And like it says, um, people are going to realize that there's a change in us. And the only, the only one who we can glorify for that change is God himself. And so we have to remind ourselves that not to do it, not to do it um, to please others, but that by obeying God and what he has set out for us, we're able to reach others. We're able to show others the change that has happened in us and say, hey, you know what? God help me be kind to others and he can help you have joy in your heart or he can help you love those who have harmed you or he can help you um, have self-control and things that you may be struggling with now. And so remind ourselves that, hey, God, our living life is a testimony to our friends at school, to our neighbors, or to that kid that we may see at church. And so remind ourselves that God can work, work on us, but through us, work towards others. So, the fruits of the world are nothing like the fruits of the Spirit. We are all sinners, and as sinners, we are born selfish and self-centered. The way of the world is to put yourself first and look out for your own interests ahead of others. Worldly fruit is impatient, short-tempered, and unkind. And we know this because as far as for me personally, before I knew Christ, I used to want to please others, which isn't a fruit of the Spirit. I used to um, want to put down others in order to lift myself higher, which isn't a Lord of the Spirit. I used to... Um, I used to, how would you say this? I used to lean on lying in order to get through life, which isn't a fruit of the spirit. And so we know that we're born into this sinful world, which isn't where God wants us to be. And it isn't who God wants us to be. And so we have to um, rely on God to guide us out of that sinful world, right? And so we know, we have to know the difference between the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the word, the world. And know that boundary line, you know, and to not cross it and to separate those two so we know where we belong and where Jesus wants us to be. And so it is quick to get angry and quick to be drugged into an argument. The fruits of the spirit are all contrary to our sinful human nature. 
It does not come naturally for us to be loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, gentle, or self-controlled. If we want these fruits in our lives, we have to depend on God to grow them. Like I said, we're born into a sinful world, and so we're not automatically the date that we're born or the date that we're able to kind of, um, how would you say, the date that we're able to be kind to someone, like we don't know that, right, because we've never experienced that. And so, as it says here, we have to go to God because at the end of the day, he's, he's the almighty and he's the only one who can show us how to be kind, show us that love. And he's able to show us that love because he's given us that love himself. But that's a whole other topic. But we have to look to, towards God to help, look to God in order for him to help you acquire these fruits, right? And so the fruits of the spirit are all contrary to our sinful human nature it does not come naturally for us to be loving joyful so fruit fruit requires water sunshine and fertilizer the fruits of the spirit require cultivation of a different kind it requires us to pray daily to read the bible to worship the lord and to serve others very importantly it's not just about growing within ourselves, but helping other people grow and helping them grow their relationship with God. And so the more time we spend with God alone and with other believers and look for opportunities to be loving and kind and gentle with others, but over time, these things will come naturally. We will become true witnesses for Jesus, for Jesus because the fruit in our spirits, the fruit will grow in our hearts. And so the more time that we spend with Jesus, the more he's going to help us. And he's going to, like it says here, grow, grow our fruits so that we're able to express them more to those people around us, right? Like it says, like we looked at earlier, a seed within itself cannot grow without that fertilizer, sun, and water. Our fruits in us cannot grow, cannot be used without the word of God and without the guidance of God. Because at the end of the day, he is the one who helps us grow those fruits and be able to use those fruits. And so, of course, the real purpose of the fruit is not simply to provide food, but to create seeds to spread that fruit to other pieces. It's a chain reaction, right? From your fruit, people will be touched. And by those people who were touched, they will touch others and so on and so forth. And that's how I came to know the word of God. And that's how you came to know the word of God, possibly, unless you grew up in the church. But maybe that's how your family, your parents are going to end up knowing the word of God through others. And because their seed or they their fruits that God helped them grow touch someone else. And so... Fruit is healthy and gives our bodies the vitamins and nutrition it needs. The fruit of the Spirit makes our health healthy. It sets us apart from the world and can make us a witness to others. It takes time and patience to cultivate these fruits. But when we let God grow these fruits in our hearts, God will bring us, God will use us to bring glory to His name. And so it's important here to note that we are not born perfect our objective in life is to become or be as close to perfect as jesus and so we are born in a sinful world in a world full of darkness in a world full of sin but we need to be able to grow our relationship with god so that he can continue to work in us and continue to grow those amazing fruits in us so that we can go out and spread his word and that's so important because if we don't spread his word and if we don't um, if we don't pass on that seed that was planted in us, then no one's going to be saved and no one's going to know of his amazing word. And at the end of the day, it's like, if God saved you and if God has, uh, has let you grow to be so amazing, why not share that with your neighbor? Why not share that with your best friend? And so I encourage you guys to be patient and the plan that God has for you guys, to ask God to continue to give you guys those fruit of the Spirit that we talked about so that he can continue to work in your life. But know that a change is not going to happen overnight. A change takes time, it takes patience, and it takes trusting in God that he has such an amazing plan for every single one of you 
that he has something greater planned for you than what you could ever imagine since the day you were born, before you were even born, right? And so I leave with you guys this question. Um, who are you putting your faith upon to, um, to let, or how, no, let me rephrase that, okay? Are you letting God use you or are you letting God use you and are you letting God grow those fruits in you, right? Are you letting God grow those fruits in you so that they can be passed on to others? And so that's all that I have for you guys today. Why don't we close off with the prayer? Right there where you are, go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be gathered here in your name. May you bless every single child on this day. May you bless their hearts, bless their minds. Um, let them be able to adapt what they learned today and today in today's study, Lord. Let it be you who guides them to use those fruits so that others may be changed, so that others may be touched by their acts, Lord. Let it be you who gives them the patience to be able to know and have faith that you are the all-powerful and the almighty and that you have such an amazing plan for them. All they have to do is trust and believe in you and have the patience to know that you are the light of the way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me on this beautiful day. May you guys have such an amazing, blessed week. And remember that things take time, but they're going to be worth it in the end of the day. And the reason that fruits of the spirit were created was to make us better and to be able to touch others through the word, through our testimony and how God has changed us. All right, guys. Bye. Peace out.